welcome to Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, offering biblical guidelines, principles of the kingdom of heaven that will help you stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven and reap the benefits that accompany you as a citizen of the kingdom, the best the king has to offer. Today's topic is the kingdom of his dear son. The moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, something amazing takes place in the spiritual realm. The newly born-again believer is translated or transferred from one kingdom into another kingdom, from a lower kingdom, which could only produce fear, terror, hate, pride, and poverty, to a greater kingdom of abundance of love, faith, humility, and unlimited resources. The Zoe life, life as a principle, life in the absolute sense, life as God has it. That which the Father has in himself, and which he gave to the incarnate Son to have in himself, and which the Son manifested in the world. Let's read Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14 from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. God has already delivered us from the power of darkness, which is the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of his dear Son, which is the kingdom of light, whereby we are enabled to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints. Transferred means to be taken out of one place and put into another. The moment you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you were transferred into another kingdom. Granted, you still live on earth. However, your citizenship is no longer primarily on this earth. Regardless of your natural citizenship in a country, as a born-again believer, you are first a citizen of God's kingdom, and God's word is your authority and the rule of law in your new kingdom. Let's read from Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. For a greater understanding of the power of darkness you were transferred out of and the glory of the kingdom of God's dear Son, making you citizens of heaven. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Let's support that scriptural context with Ephesians chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. As Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. In other words, because of the new birth, through your faith in Jesus Christ, you entered into God's covenant of love, where there is no need for a curse, only blessing. Let's read what Apostle Paul says about this from Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The new covenant is between God the Father 
and the resurrected man, Jesus, the Son of the living God and firstborn from the dead. They are incapable of breaking the terms of the covenant, and therefore this covenant has no need for a curse. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith, which is the result of the intense love of God to bless mankind. You are in him, and he is in you. That makes you and I a partaker of the everlasting covenant based on better promises through him. So then, you have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of better promises through God's dear son, Jesus. In the kingdom of his dear son, based on better promises, Jesus is not only the covenant partner with God the Father, but also the covenant sacrifice, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world for your sins. His shed blood is the new and living way through which you enter into the presence of the Father without a sense of guilt or shame. Jesus is your covenant representative, the only mediator between God and man. He has given you his name, his wisdom, his weapons, and his identity. His great loving kindness and tender mercy is everlasting. He is the friend who sticks closer than a brother and has promised he will never leave you nor forsake you. This is your security in the kingdom of his dear son. Jesus gave himself as the sacrifice, and his blood paid the full price, satisfying the demands of justice for Adam's treason. The blood of Jesus defeated the devil, making it possible for you and me to be translated or transferred from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. When you stand firm on the fact that you have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, the new covenant that is between God and the Father and the resurrected Lord Jesus can never be broken. You are in Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. When you stand firm on your covenant, the devil and his curse have no more dominion over you. Jesus redeemed you from the curse of sin, sickness, poverty, fear, and every evil work of the devil. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You are redeemed from every aspect of the law of sin and death. Jesus has honored you with the authority and privilege to wear the very clothing of war he wore and with which he defeated all the enemies of hell. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 17 says, For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. This is the same full armor of God that belongs to you as listed in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 18. Therefore, take upon the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. When you put on God's armor and walk in the confidence of your blood covenant with Almighty God, you become a threat to the devil because you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Your greatest weapon to maintain your freedom in the kingdom of his dear son is the love of God that has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit himself has entered your heart under the new covenant, you have the capacity in your heart to house the love of God himself. That gives you the right and privilege to a zero failure rate because as 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8 says, Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. If you do happen to fail in this natural world, 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 gives you the right to repent. Have your sin washed away by the everlasting blood of Jesus and be treated by God as if you had never failed, as if you never sinned. You have been made his righteousness, totally redeemed from the curse and its fear. 
forever. God made a promise to Abraham that in his seed, all nations of the earth would be blessed. He brought Jesus, the Messiah, through 42 generations of descendants because God never forgets his promise. He never forgets his covenant. The law given by God through Moses 430 years after Abraham kept Abraham's descendants under his protection and blessing until the coming of the promised one. He kept them pointed toward the mystery that was hidden in God, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. When the fullness of time came, Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one of God, was born of a woman into a flesh body as the Lamb of God, born under the law, as the final sacrifice of the Abrahamic covenant. He ushered the way into the eternal new covenant that can never be broken, which is based on better promises for all who would receive it. This new and everlasting covenant cut between the Father and Jesus was ratified, not with the blood of bulls and of goats, but in the precious blood of the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. When you were born again and made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you were washed in his covenant blood, which was shed for you and were made his righteousness, no longer a slave of sin. You were not born a servant of the Most High, but a son. Let's confirm that from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. You are a servant of God, like your blood brother, Jesus, by choice. Since you are a son and a joint heir of God through Jesus, then you should have the same mind as Jesus. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Jesus did not consider he was robbing his father of honor, sovereignty, or deity to be equal with him. Let that same mind be in you. He made you his righteousness and made you sit together with him in heavenly places. Then you should not consider yourself robbing Jesus to be called his joint heir. You didn't do that for yourself. God did it for you through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. Understanding the magnitude of what God has done for us in the new covenant of his kingdom and our sonship with almighty God himself should cause a surge of love and gratitude to well up in us that cries, Abba, Father, take the time to rejoice before him today and say out loud, I am no longer a servant. I am a son. And if a son, then I am an heir of God through the anointed one of God. My sins are forever washed away by his blood, and I am made righteous in his eyes. My heavenly father loves me and gave himself for me. I am seated together with him in heavenly places in Christ, and I can come boldly to his throne of grace because of the precious blood of Jesus, my blood brother. I am blessed and filled with this love who dwells in me. Amen. Now, listen, this includes males and females. Yeah, for there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, the word of God says. When we choose to walk in God's love, then as he is, so are we in this world. No wonder Satan is after our love walk. Walking in God's love releases great power. The devil's strongholds are broken and the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Stepping out of love and yielding to strife and division violates the love nature of the Holy Spirit who indwells us and produces condemnation in the heart of the believer that destroys confidence toward God. No confidence toward God, no faith. No faith, no victory. As 1 John 5, 4 will attest, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, 
And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. A life full of the power of God's covenant love will never fail because you acknowledge and live the kingdom-compliant lifestyle in full assurance of being translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Our citizenship is in heaven, the kingdom of his dear Son. If you would like to refer this episode to others, click on share and subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date when new episodes drop. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you did. I hope you join me next time for Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, where we stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven.